hey guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how i make this delicious chin chin i promised you guys this recipe for a very long time so today is the day i finally show you how i make this crunchy rich chin chin everybody loves it the kids love it it's crunchy but it's not hard it's not the type that when you're chewing it you'll be feeling headache no this one is like a mix between shortbread and regular old chin chin okay just look at this delicious goodness yes so if you'd like to know how i make this very beautiful chin chin then just keep on watching So these are the ingredients for my chin chin, flour, sugar, margarine, milk, I like to use full cream powdered milk, um, baking powder, water, eggs, cinnamon powder, vanilla powder, grated nutmeg, salt and milk powder flavor, okay? Now you can use either the nutmeg or the cinnamon powder but I like to combine both but if you want to have just a rich um nutmeg flavor then use just nutmeg if you want cinnamon flavor use just cinnamon but i like to combine the two okay and yeah this is the scale that i use for measuring i measure everything i measure with a scale i also use measuring cups and measuring spoons we're not eyeballing anything in this building <laughs> okay uh yeah so I also use King's oil for frying my chin chin. Um, that's the best oil I have discovered for frying chin chin. I don't really, I don't really use it to cook my regular food, but for frying chin chin, trust me, King's oil is the best. It doesn't get for me um, easily. All right, guys. So I use powdered milk for this recipe, and the powdered milk I use is mixy. You can use any powdered milk in the market, anyone that you like. But I use mixy because it's very, it's full cream milk and I use a little bit over one cup, I think one and a half cups anyway. But normally I like to use, if I'm doing it for commercial purposes like to sell it, I usually use one cup of milk or we have, basically I usually use one cup of milk because milk usually makes um, baked goods go bad. So if you are doing it to sell, you should reduce the quantity of milk that you use or you can add preservatives but I don't like to add preservatives in anything I bake so that is why but since this one is just for home consumption I can use up to two cups um, I'm going to leave all the exact measurements that I use in the description box so just go there and check it out okay um, what else then I also use this milk powder I don't know the name there are different ones but this one is milk flavor powdered milk flavor so when I use one cup of milk, I use two tablespoons of this. But now that I'm using more than one cup of milk, I'm going to use just one tablespoon. You can use milk flavor powder if you are doing it commercially, but if you are using it at home, you can omit using this one and just use more of the powdered milk, okay? And there's also vanilla powder. They sell it in the market. Wherever they sell baking ingredients and you find this, they also sell vanilla powder. So I'm using vanilla powder as well and yeah i think that's basically this is the brand of cinnamon that i use you can actually grind your own cinnamon or use any other brand any other brand you want but i use this brand and i like it so much for baking powder any brand i see in the market i buy i usually buy in small quantities like this because i might not use it again for a very long time and you know baking powder actually um can become less active over time so what I do is I just buy small quantities. I think it's like 100 or 150. So after I'm done with it today, if I don't use it again, I can easily throw it away and it's not pain me. Or like when you buy those big um, baking powder um, containers and then you're not a frequent baker, it's actually a waste in the long run. So yeah, I'm actually going to be helping me today because I can't do it alone. I'm already panting just by talking. So I'm actually going to help me today. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is to sieve the flour. So I always make sure I sieve my flour properly to remove any dirt in it and to also air the flour so that it will be light and fluffy, okay? And we're going to be using this um, mesh sieve. This is the best thing to use and sieve your flour. Ok, 
Okay, so while she sees the flour, I'm going to be prepping the other ingredients. I've already measured out uh, most of the dry ingredients, but I haven't measured out um, baking powder simply because I don't want it to become less active before I'm ready to use it. So I'm going to measure it immediately and add into the flour um, that she's sieving. And another thing I don't buy and keep is also flour. I don't like to buy flour and keep because, like I said, if you're not, I, I like my ingredients being very fresh. So I prefer when I want to do something or when I want to bake, I go to a store that I know that they have high turnover. I go to that store and buy my flour from them because you are sure that at least the flour is fresh flour. So whenever you're measuring with your measuring cup and spoon, make sure you level the ingredients using a flat, you know, the back of a knife or something, but always level the ingredients to get the accurate measurement. I like to sieve all my dry ingredients together and then I turn with a spoon. I turn it thoroughly so that all the ingredients can, you know, go around the flour. And then next, this is a very, very important stage. I add the margarine and I start to mix it and mix it and mix it till it turns back to powder you guys this part is very very important the reason why we do this mixing is so that we can coat the flour with butter and then when we add the liquid it doesn't activate the gluten you all know that when you add water to flour it activates the gluten in the flour and it becomes sticky and gummy and you know that's what makes changing texture feel like bread or puff puff sometimes okay but if you want it to be really really crunchy then you have to take your time and mix the butter and the flour so that by the time you add your wet ingredients it does not activate the gluten in the flour easily okay i hope you guys get that and then when you're kneading you don't have to knead for so long just knead it enough that all the ingredients wet and dry are combined properly once you have done that transfer it to a flat surface knead a little more and then divide it into smaller parts so that you can easily roll it out and cut okay i like to use a rolling pin i love this candlestick rolling pin so it makes my life easier i just roll one batch of chin chin and then I use the pizza cutter that also makes my life very easy so I roll it out to maybe a quarter of an inch thick and then I use my um, pizza cutter and proceed to cut okay so before I cut the chin chin I like to remove all the uneven edges you know because it was rolled out so some edges are not going to be straight i just use the pizza cutter and cut out those edges because those are the edges that give chin chin an uneven shape especially if you are trying to sell this chin chin try and make sure the shapes are even i try to be as accurate as possible i actually love this part of you know making chin chin So you can cut your chin chin into different shapes and sizes try not to make it too big i like this shape then i also remove all the tiny edges around the chin chin the tiny chin chin that were cut too small or the ones that are cut too big okay because when they go into the fire the ones that are too small might start burning and the ones that are too big will not be cooked okay of course if you're using your hand to cut it you can't get it like you know accurate measurement but just try and eyeball it and make sure that they are all around the same size so that your chin chin will cook evenly so all those edges i removed i'll just add it back to another batch roll out and cut okay so i don't use any extra flour to cut or roll or fry my chin chin simply because i roll my chin chin on a very flat surface and you guys chin chin has memory okay once you put it in hot oil it will remember its original shape and go back to its original shape okay sometimes adding extra flour to your chin chin can change the texture so i really don't want that and it always comes out really nice okay yeah now while i'm rolling out i am going to put my oil on fire 
just so that the oil gets hot enough make sure you have enough oil in the pan we are deep frying chin chin we do not shallow fry chin chin okay so you can also bake your chin chin but for me if i'm going to be eating flour sugar butter and milk i might as well just go all the way and fry it okay make sure your oil is hot enough before you add your chin chin that is why i just put one into the pan so that i can test it once it starts bubbling up just know that the oil is hot enough for you to add your chin chin now chin chin is like a dance between low heat and high heat when i put the chin chin at first i put it on high heat and then i reduce the heat and then i keep frying and stirring so you have to eyeball the quantity that is enough for the pan do not crowd the pan with chin chin if not your chin chin is going to be soggy and if you put too little your chin chin is going to burn easily okay so you have to try and strike a balance once the oil stops bubbling so much then you know that your chin chin is ready because it means that um there is no water coming out of the chin chin anymore to make the oil bubble okay i hope you get that yeah so chin chin is not something that you put on fire and then you go and start watching telemundo and then you come back and check up on it no you have to stand by the fire and stare it from time to time you stare you stop you stare you stop you have to keep watching it so that your chin chin does not burn because it burns easily so for me once it turns golden brown i am sure that it is ready i just scoop it out of the fire and you know serve but if you're a kind of person that likes burnt chin chin you can leave it on the fire for a little longer but personally i like golden brown chin chin so once i see that it's turning golden brown i reduce the heat and then i scoop everything out of the oil so yeah that's it it's very easy to make once you have all your ingredients and measurements in place then you know your delicious chin chin will be ready in no time okay thank you guys so much for watching if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video bye